at Traffica Europe Radio, RCI New York, University of the Arts London, research at Camberwell, Chelsea, Wimbledon Colleges of Arts, production, with support from RCI London. Decomposed Theatre by Matej Wisniak. Translation by Josefina Komporali. Quiet Madness Good evening. Butterflies have overrun our town. Gigantic, magnificent, flesh-eating butterflies. We've never seen so many butterflies here before. They're absolutely everywhere. On the streets, rooftops, cars and trees. Anyone who happened to get caught on the streets when they first warmed in was devoured. From my window, I can see the skeletons of three humans and a dog, their bones picked squeaky clean. The butterflies go for your eyelashes first, then your eyebrows, eyelids, lips, vocal cords, and taste buds. It's the most vividly colorful ones who get the first pick at this. The others then have what's left. Thank you. The whole town is paralyzed at present. All the townsfolk have barricaded themselves in their homes peering through windows covered in butterflies at the streets covered in butterflies. It looks as if these insects have come to stay for good. What's more, they continue flying in. The layer of butterflies is getting thicker and thicker by the minute, looking more like a blanket of multicolored snow. Our armed forces are powerless against the butterflies. We simply need to learn to live with them. What we eventually worked out is that the butterflies will only devour living creatures that make sudden movements. If you move extremely slowly, the butterflies won't react. You can even squash them under your shoes and they will simply die. To be honest, you can't even walk down the street without treading all over them. Because their wings are so delicate, almost transparent, the butterflies you crush slowly decompose into a fine powder, their own bodies pulverized in front of our eyes. Life in our town uh, takes place in complete slow motion. To cross the street, the colonel requires a full half hour. To visit the nearest cafe, which is only at the end of the road, the general needs almost two hours. As a result of all this, uh, people show signs of seriously slowed down thinking. We talk to each other at the rate of only one word a day. And our lovemaking is just as slow. Fevered Madness Good evening. The flesh-eating butterflies have been driven out of our town by the stink snails. They emerged from every nook and cranny, from the depths of the earth, from canals, cellars and sewers. They crawl up the walls and over the windows, leaving fine trails of slime behind them. They don't eat anything at all, but the stench they give off is unbearable. People have to move about at a run to avoid throwing up and collapsing in the street. Hi, 
Hi guys, good morning. The real problem with the stink snails is that they somehow get into people's houses. Like, you wake up in the morning and get out of bed only to find your slippers stuffed with snails. You go to the bathroom, right? To find your sink is overflowing with snails. Ew, you can't see yourself in the mirror because of the hundreds of snails already stuck all over it like gangrene. You go in the kitchen, slice your bread only to find a stink snail hiding in the loaf. Oh yeah, and you can't even heat up some milk or make yourself an oat milk latte without finding a black snail with green horns already sitting in each pot or pan and they're highly mobile mobile too on every chair you'll find a huge great stink snail perched staring back at you with a guilty look like <laughs> they slither unbelievably quickly over the furniture up the curtains landing on the ceiling and twirling across at breakneck speed as soon as you open a book a tiny flattened snail will plop out. Your old gramophone doesn't work anymore. Snails have made a nest in there. Even your tightly locked drawers swarm with snails. The tiny horns growing, the odd tuft of hair. Ew. Things were much better when we had the butterflies. We all realize that now. You can't even shake hands with someone because a snail will zip in between your palms in a flash. If you buy a newspaper, you're basically guaranteed that when you reach into your pocket for some cash, you'll encounter a snail or two in there. Meanwhile, all the stink snails crushed under people's shoes and car wheels have formed a fine layer of slush made from their blood and bits of flesh. <laughs> Since everyone has to run all the time, we can't say much to each other. <laughs> Those who do dare to stop to exchange a couple of words risk immediate nausea. The butterflies were so clean, says the first person, wrenching. And they were so pretty, replies the other before throwing out. To live with the stink snails, first of all, you need to learn to be silent. For every word you say, there's a little stink snail that will immediately take its place inside your mouth. Lucid Madness Good evening. The stink snails were driven out by a huge, all-pervading creature whose body is shaped like an odorless and colorless rain that never stops falling on our town. We soon realized that the rain wasn't real rain because it didn't leave any drops or puddles. The nation Oh, uh -huh.
creature feeds on the substance of things. Slowly and imperceptibly, it empties out anything that has a heart, a soul, a thought. Now you only see dead bodies lying around the streets. There's no point in buying apples. They'll only be hollow on the inside. Loaves have no crumbs anymore. Hens lay transparent eggs. The trees are just inflated trunks. Pick up a stone and you'll find that it's strangely light. Fish with skin covering just some elongated air bubble bob on the surface of our rivers. Each time a dog tries to bark, you'll hear it wheezing instead, and you might even see it collapse to the ground like a fragile house of cards. The rain creature seeps in deeper and deeper. There is no shelter against the rain creature. We've tried everything. Metal umbrellas, armored capes, reinforced underground bunkers, resistance, and silence. Lately, the rain creature has even had a go at attacking time. Nobody knows anymore whether it's night or day, if you're waking or sleeping, if you're alone or swallowed up by a crowd, if you're touching your own skin or the skin of someone else you're rubbing shoulders with in this vast throng of empty beings. Because the rain creature also lives in the flesh of us humans, in our blood, in our movements, and in our dreams, it has the ability to be absolutely everywhere. It's inside each and every thought, inside each and every spoken word. You can do nothing to hide from it. It knows everything, each moment of the day and night. It monitors all our brains at the same time because it breathes at the same time in all our brains. And it speaks to us as if it were a second voice inside us. The sort of things it says are hardly subtle. Oh, I wouldn't think so. Or, come on, that's taking it too far. Or, it's not a good idea to insist. Or quite bluntly, drop it. That'll never work. Where are the sting snails of yesteryear? We desperately miss them. Uh, to start with, they didn't make any noise at least. Performed by Maria Forrester. Recording and music by Sam Halmerak. Directed by Kate O'Connor.